before you can program with Python, you need to install Python in your computer. So let's go ahead and download and install Python. Okay, so now that we are in the web browser, so you can see that Python uh, website opens. So look for Windows, or it depends on the, the platform you're using, but in my case, since I'm using Windows, automatically detects that I'm using Windows, then you go to download, as you can see, but you could choose only on that one, like Mac OS, Linux, and other uh, platforms. You can uh, see it there. So in my case, I'll click on Windows. Then while I'm here, then I will locate the one that suits my the my system architecture. The latest one will always be on top like this. So I'm using a 64-bit operating system. Okay, so you choose the one that suits you. you see that there's no more, uh, the, this particular version is not compatible with Windows 7. So in, I just click on installer, that is my own case. Click on it, you can see that it's downloading. All right, so it could take some seconds. Uh, it depends on how fast your internet is. So it's, it's downloaded. So as it's here, double click on it, uh, where you downloaded it to look for the file, double click on it. So the installation process will start like this. Then you check, make sure you check the add Python to parts. Okay, that's you check, you check those two, then click on install now. So it goes through the process as you can see. So uh, so it also depends on so uh, how fast it is. So you see that it is successfully installed. Then once that has been installed, close that, open CMD, then that's all you press uh, Windows arrow, then type CMD, press enter, it shows you this kind of environment, this uh, uh, environment. So you type Python. Once you type Python, it shows up with the version and everything that you have. Or you can also type Python hyphen, double hyphen, or double dash version. But you just type Python to make things easy. So this simply says that Python has been installed successfully in our system. But if you don't have it installed, it's going to show you that whatever command you enter is not uh, is not known as internal or external command or whatever. Okay, so once you do that, and you can simply just write your code here. So what you do, just type in the prompt here, type um, print and type whatever inside in my case, type print and double uh, quote, then type um, introduction to Python. So like this, once you do that, press enter. You see that it returns it. I have introduction to uh, Python as my, as the code. So I have written a program. We just wrote our first program in Python. So you can also do other things. For example, you can say print, um, no parentheses now, that's no double quote or anything. Just type print, uh, then three plus five, press enter. So you see that it returns the uh, the the answer, that's it returns the result, which is uh, it. Then you can also do other things, other oper operations uh, using operators like division, multiplications, and so on. So you can see that it returns them and I get the result. Okay, so you can see, so you can basically program here. But we're going to see how to program in a proper environment in the next video. In order to program with Python, just like other languages, you need an ID or integrated development environment. Okay, though you can use, uh, simply use Notepad or Notepad++, but you have other platforms like uh, PyCharm and the rest for such um, uh, development or for such programming. But in this video, I'm going to see how we can install and configure our uh, VS Code so that we can use it to do Python programming. All right, so once you get to the website like this, you go to code.visualstudio.com. Once you get there, the website will automatically detect your computer operating system. So in my case, it's Windows. So you see that download for Windows. Look at that, just select it. Okay, once you click on download, then it takes you to this, uh, it's not downloading actually, but it just uh, thank you for, uh, thanks you for downloading it. So you can see that my mine is already downloading. So once the download is done, as you can see, so it is done. So go to the place you downloaded it on, just click on it right here, or you go to the folder you downloaded it on. But in this case, just click on the file, just click on the link there. So it opens for installation. So accept the agreement and click on next. So then of course, make sure that it is the add to part is selected, let it selected. And you could just select other one, but in my case, just click on the, uh, for you to add it, the icon to the desktop, then click on, um, then click on uh, next. Once you click on next, then then click on install. All right. So once you click on install, then it goes through the installation process, and you just be a little bit patient. Then once you, uh, before you know, it is uh, installed. So 
So you can see that this one is uh, now installed successfully. So now that it has been installed successfully, just launch it, click on finish while that is selected for launch. So you see that it's launched. So what you now need to do is to open file, that's click on file, open a, a folder, then look for whatever you have, because I already created the folder earlier. So I called Python. So the, the folder is empty as you can see. So it actually brings the entire thing into this place, into this environment. So I just type lesson one dot py. So lesson one dot py. So py is an extension of Python file. Okay, so you see that it is here and you see that it is blank. That's the only thing that I have within here. So for you to write any program with VS Code, you need to download uh, some um, extensions or an extension basically. Click on this little icon here. Then uh, on the search, on that uh, test input, type Python. So make sure that it is Python language setup for Microsoft or by Microsoft, as you can see here. My in case, I've already installed it. So if you have no install, you see that on the install will be installed. Click on it to install. So once you do that, it will take some seconds and everything will be installed. Then after you have installed that, then go back to that same spot where you type uh, Python and type code runner. So code runner, once you type code runner, you can see that I've not installed this one, I see code runner here. Then what this one will do is click on install, that's what I've just done. So it's installing. What this one will do is that it will give you the play button that can help you to run the code once you have typed it. So you can see that it is at the right, top right there. All right, which we're going to see as we start writing our code. So let me just do a little test. So testing, you can see that little, look at that. So that, that little play button there, see that as I clicked on that, see that it displays the result for me on the inside the terminal or in the output at the bottom here. Okay, so you can do a whole lot of things here. Okay, so then, uh, so that is what you have. So with this, you, you can write your normal program. For example, create a variable, I give it uh, a name, I give it a value called John. So I print that variable out, not John this time, but print the variable, but of course the value will be John. So click on that play button to so see that it displays uh, the answer or display John for me. Okay, so uh, that is basically what that is. Uh, so the next thing we need to do Then, but there's, there's a problem. This is not enough. This is where the configuration, reconfiguration comes in. So here, if I, it's been okay so far, but if, that is not enough for a program. So programs usually ask you for inputs, like you can see. So I'll say name, input, what is your name? So the, the Python program is asking me. So if I come here now at this bottom, so you can see that it's asking me what's, what's your name. So it's, it's waiting for me, it's prompting me for an input, but I can't type anything as you can see because by default it goes to the output as you can see here it's not within the terminal okay it is only within the terminal that you can type something like this that you can type an input okay but here it is locked down that is more or less like only display that is what this is for okay so the next thing we are going to do is to now configure this vs code so that we can allow it to take inputs or to go to terminal by default when you run your application so go to settings then click on settings as you just saw. Then scroll down patiently. Look for where you have code actions on save. Just look for edit in settings.json. Here, as you can see here, click on right there, click on it. Once you click on it, it opens up like this. You open the settings.json like this. Then type this code where you have in double code, code hyphen runner dot run in terminal. Then close the code, then column true then put, you must put that command there because you have other things within this bracket or well, within this block. Okay, so what this one would do is to automatically redirect or direct your output into the terminal so instead of the output that we saw earlier that will not allow you to type something or that will not allow any input. Okay, so if you close up those ones, if you come back here and you run it, you see that it takes you straight to the terminal instead of taking you to the output like we saw earlier. You can see that I just put an input and give me a result. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you have not done so already. Like the video and share it. Thank you for watching. See you in another video.